31st of June 2020. Happy you have joined us and if you have been with us uh, since early morning, thank you for keeping us company. I'm Dereva Hilewi and I'm speaking to Dr. Wahome Isaac. He will help us now to understand how do we adapt to the new norm of wearing masks. How can we communicate better? We are speaking about hearing and communication during COVID-19 pandemic. There are things you need to understand about the mask, the mask, how to donate, and the importance of having it. And in case you find yourself communicating with someone who is uh, not uh, able to speak, like uh, the verbal communication, how then can you help them to understand what you mean. Good morning and welcome. How are you? Good morning. Happy Madaraka Day. Happy Madaraka Day, Hillary. Good to see you. I, I, I don't know. We've been friends for long, yeah. but I've never hosted you. I only yeah. invite you for other, uh, uh, other people who host you, and I'm happy to be hosting you today. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Yes, yeah, so uh, help us now to dissect into this particular matter of wearing masks. Okay. Now, it has been difficult. Actually, Kenyans, to at Tunatoa mask and you put to ski vizuri. I don't know. Is it about the ears or it's about the mouth? What's yes. the problem? <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. I think uh, right now we are have uh, we're in a you know in a, in a state of a pandemic with unintended consequences and with a new norm that has come that we have to adapt mm -hmm. and we have to know how we are going to live uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, all of us know about the coronavirus issue that has brought the COVID-19 disease. Mm -hmm. And the COVID-19 disease basically uh, requires us uh, with a guideline from the Ministry of Health, which is the national guiding mm -hmm. uh, authority, and also the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. on some of the public health measures that we can be able to do mm -hmm. so that we can protect ourselves from getting the coronavirus infections or either the COVID-19 disease. Mm -hmm. So basically, when we, w what we are talking about is the uh, reduction of transmission of disease. Mm -hmm. So there are basic, uh, uh, basic guidelines that have been put that can be able to help us uh, prevent uh, the disease uh, because we know the disease is basically transmitted either by droplets or aerosol mm -hmm. and that's why the mask come in and we shall digest mm -hmm. and talk more about it mm -hmm. all of us know that uh, on the first that first of december is when the first case of uh, coronavirus or covid 19 disease was uh, reported in a local uh, local WHO office in Wuhan, China. Mm -hmm. And then in the 11th March, the WHO declared it as a public uh, uh, health issue, as a, a, a declared it's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then on the 21st, uh, we got the, our first infection on the 13th March of 2020. Mm -hmm. And then on the 27th March, uh, when the government basically declined uh, measures or guidelines to prevent the transmission, basically what they are calling the flattening the curve. Yeah. And that is where we are, mm -hmm. so that we don't stretch our facility, so that we protect the you know people we love, our families, our colleagues, and so on. Mm -hmm. And again, on the 26th of March, uh, there was again extension of the guideline, so that we can continue flattening the curve. Sure. So some of the things that are measures that the government put on that time is like controlled, you know, lockdowns yeah. and curfews. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that they, they invoke the Public Health Act where we are supposed to wear our mask mm -hmm. is mandatory basically right. it's mandatory there's no question about it mm -hmm. it's a mandatory we have to wear mask mm -hmm. the other thing is that we have to make sure that we are we are maintaining distance mm -hmm. and where possible if you can if you can stay at home right if you can but if you if you can't stay at home and you are going out to the public uh, the guideline is that basically make sure you have uh, good hand hygiene Wear your mask and keep distance. And the distance is not just the front distance. It's, it's all around. around. It's 1.5. You know, all we are around. always like you're looking at the person <laughs> in front of you uh, and yeah. you look at the person uh, mm -hmm. uh, behind you. Mm -hmm. So basically, co coronavirus uh, or the COVID-19 disease affect the upper airway. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even the gut, it has been reported that. Mm -hmm. So when in the upper airway, it causes the severe upper respiratory uh, syndrome. 
mm -hmm. uh, basically caused by caused by the COVID uh, virus, uh, co uh, coronavirus two, mm -hmm. and usually people have symptoms between two to fourteen days. Right. But there are people. Most of the people are asymptomatic, as we have seen. They don't have the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So whether you have the symptoms or you are pre-symptomatic, or you are symptomatic, where you have the symptoms like the cough. Uh, uh, fever, fatigue, and so on. And now I hear there's diarrhea. There's diarrhea because it affects the upper airway and also the the lining of the uh, uh, digestive system. Mm -hmm. So you can have vomiting, diarrhea, and nausea, and also other signs like uh, fatigue. Mm -hmm. So, so it's closely it could be interpreted or oh, it's close to malaria. Uh, it's really not close to malaria. It's just like it's a flu. Mm -hmm. It's a very specific flu mm -hmm. or a virus mm -hmm. that affects the upper airway mm -hmm. and the lower airway and sometimes even the gastrointestinal system. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically caused by the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So we, we are saying that you have people who are symptomatic, people who are asymptomatic. They don't have any symptoms. But mm -hmm. all of them mm -hmm. can shed the virus and transmit in equal measure. That's wow, why people that's are told, dangerous. if you have to stay home, stay at home. And if you have to go out, mm -hmm. please wear your mask. And keep distance. And the people, <laughs> the people who are symptomatic or uh, have the disease can present differently. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be present, especially for older generation or people who are in the older age group mm -hmm. or people who have other underlying diseases mm -hmm. like uh, cancers, diabetes, Anybody who has a compromised immunity, mm -hmm. these are people who basically get severe or critical mm -hmm. uh, disease. Okay. And they end up either in ICU or in, uh, in, in critical conditions. Mm -hmm. we, ha we have had uh, questions on the types of masks that we are using. Uh -huh. uh, there were initial stages of the COVID-19 in Kenya. We were told to use surgical masks, three layers, do something. Yeah. Then it came, everyone can provide a mask. Now we have the yes. kitenge. As in, we have all sorts of uh, masks that uh, we are using. Okay. Who, now, at this particular time, now, what should we use? Are we on the right track? Yeah, so basically we have different types of masks, like you rightly put it. So we have the, the what we call the aerosol uh, generating uh, procedure mask, mm -hmm. the N94, you know, those big masks, or uh, KN95, depending on where they are coming from. The N94, they are basically manufactured in the US and approved there, and then KN95, they're usually with the standards uh, in China, so they are produced there. Mm -hmm. And then we have the other FFP3 that are basically in the in UK and so on. Mm -hmm. So those ones, basically, uh, we, 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 we like reserving them for the hospital mm -hmm. because, you know, the way the coronavirus has come, it has come and it has stretched, you know, our supplies. Mm -hmm. And then we have the surgical mask. Uh, the surgical mask uh, that, that can either loop on our ears or we can tie them up. So these are they ha they either three ply most of them are three ply mask, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the cloth mask. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea about wearing a mask is basically protecting the other person and also protecting yourself. Right. So if you have a barrier that will prevent you transmitting a disease because sometimes you are asymptomatic and you don't know, mm -hmm. or you are symptomatic and you know. Oh, and then also it can be able to filter back so that you don't get the coronavirus infection. Right. So what the N95 mask stands for is basically it, it filtrates up to around 95% of the uh, viruses. Mm -hmm. Again, we have uh, the N basically is, uh, we have the R, N, and P95. Mm -hmm. And then we have the surgical mask. Now, uh, all, all this, if you have to wear a mask, mm -hmm. if you must go out, we are saying, please wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these masks are okay because it's better to have a mask than, than having nothing. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is a mandatory requirement in the country. Now, the, 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 there was a worry, and I remember uh, CES uh, Dr. Mwangangi mentioning that you could be having the mask, yes, but yes. your eyes yes. are in the open and yes. they, they have uh, the mucous membrane, so it is even likely uh -huh. you can get coronavirus. So if whether you have a mask, please also observe social distancing. Now, we have seen some people coming up with the ideas on uh, the innovations of the mask that in Afunika to as in 
but this lower bit is still open. Okay. Uh, are they helping themselves really? So good. I think uh, one thing that uh, you're really putting it rightly is that uh, when you're wearing a mask, you don't put other things aside. For example, like hand hygiene, because when you touch your, 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 your mask, mm -hmm. which basically we, is a surface with a fluid or secretions or anything like that, you can easily transmit uh, the bacteria or I mean the virus. Mm -hmm. So I think like you're saying, mm -hmm. when you're wearing a mask, don't forget the other hygiene. Don't touch your face when you're wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. And if you touch the surfaces or other places that you think they're infected, especially in public places, wash your hands mm -hmm. with soap and water mm -hmm. or you can use a uh, sanitizer. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, of course uh, the droplets can come, they can enter through the mucus membrane mm -hmm. especially the you know the fluid generating uh, uh, viruses mm -hmm. in, t in terms when somebody is speaking when people are speaking or when they are talking mm -hmm. they usually spit some saliva or something like that and that is basically what carries the virus so some of this can fall in your eyes and you know we have talked about or people have talked about wearing a face shield or something like that mm -hmm. to protect you and that's why the distance is very important so that when people are spitting mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah, fall on you All right. and then we have the other type of mask the mm -hmm. clear mask for is people. it the modern one? <laughs> it's not modern. You know, in Europe and other countries, we don't have it in the country yet. Mm -hmm. But I think people who, have, uh, who are hard of hearing mm -hmm. or they are deaf, mm -hmm. they are really suffering. Right. Because people are used, uh, naturally, when you're speaking, mm -hmm. we feel your emotion. Mm -hmm. We look at how your face is moving mm -hmm. and how your lips is moving. And then we can connect with you. Right. But now the face is covered. Mm -hmm. So what we have is just the eye movement. Mm, you can and tell. when you have them, we can't be able to tell. Mm -hmm. So people who, have, uh, who are challenged with hearing, mm -hmm. now they have a, a challenge. It's and true. that is why we want to see how we can talk to these people mm -hmm. and see how we can help them. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have, we have uh, the mask degrade speech, uh -huh. uh, some of the innovations that have come. Now, how now do I help these people? How do I communicate to them? I oh. have a mask. Okay. I'm speaking to you, can't tell what I'm doing with the... Yeah. I could be making other faces with my mouth, but you can't tell. How do I communicate? So usually when we speak, mm -hmm. we use either voiced consonants Mm -hmm. or non-voiced consonants. So voiced consonants, for example, A, B, K. Mm -hmm. Basically those ones, they are voiles that are, have volume or they are audible. Right. And then we have unvoiced consonants mm -hmm. like SH, S, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. For example, if, and then we have voiced consonants that are weak. They have either weak beginning or weak ending. For example, flowers. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the S at the end is weak. Mm -hmm. And then we have, for example, when a voice, uh, a voice consonant is starting with a tr train. Mm -hmm. train. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, when you're having a mask, and come. Mm -hmm. it becomes, it, it muffles. It, it basically, it muffles that sound. Mm -hmm. It blocks the sound so that it's not produced and you can't be able to hear it well. So the hearing, the way it is, the hearing, there's a part where mm -hmm. the, uh, we, we are able to understand sounds mm -hmm. and there is a point where the sounds are audible. Mm -hmm. Now the consonants are the ones that help us with understanding. Mm -hmm. So for example, when I say train and rain, those are two different words. True. So how we understand them is the consonant at the end, which is a high frequency, rain, train. It's a high frequency at the end. Mm -hmm. So when you have a mask and I'm not able to lip read you and I have a hearing loss, I will not be able to see the, 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 the movement yeah. of your lips mm -hmm. because train and rain, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. produce them differently. Mm -hmm. So people who have hearing loss, they are not able usually to, to lip read you. And this is basically what helps them to understand conversation. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, these people, they have either mental exhaustion because they try to understand the conversation, but because the mask is mandatory and you have to wear, mm -hmm. they either give up or they withdraw from they conversation mm -hmm. and stay on their own. Mm -hmm. So what we are telling them today is that there are some tricks or some advices that you can help these people mm -hmm. to understand you better. Okay. Number one, people now have realized that they have been lip reading. 
-hmm. They have not been able to understand speech mm -hmm. because uh, they have been lip reading. They, they thought they could hear well, right. but now they can't be able to hear well. Mm -hmm. So we are telling them now, if you have been at home and you have discovered my staying at home has hindered me from hearing, I can't be able to hear well. Mm -hmm. I can't be able to understand conversation. I can hear sometimes, but I can't be able to mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. So you probably need a hearing test. And you can do a hearing test even at home. So the WHO has, pro has come up with, a, with an application called Hear Who. Mm -hmm. You can download the application and do your hearing test at home and see whether you have a hearing problem. Right. Now, if you are somebody with a hearing aid or, and, or you have a hearing loss and you have a hearing aid, please wear your hearing aid every time you go to the public. Mm -hmm. Of course, people with hearing aids, they are complaining now. They have, some of them have specs, they have the hearing aid, mm -hmm. and then they have the, the, the mask. mask. A, lot of, a lot of bulk <laughs> around there and a lot of irritation and sweating and all that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are telling them, please wear your hearing aid. When you're removing your mask, because usually the way you, you remove your mask, put it down and wash your hands, is that uh, you have to counter check again whether the hearing aid is there because most of the time it falls down. Oh, yeah. So it falls down uh, and if sometimes it can break down. Uh, so again, when you go outside there, you can increase the volume mm -hmm. because people, when you go out in a noisy background, your hearing sort of is disturbed. Mm -hmm. Understanding in noise becomes a problem. So basically, it's either you increase the volume or you can optimize your hearing aid. They are now very cool hearing aids that you tap them and you are able, you know, it, it's able to analyze the ideological, analyze basically your environment. And if it's a noisy environment, it will optimize and you'll be able to understand conversation better. If you don't have that, then you need to probably increase your, your, your voice. Mm -hmm. Other things that we should uh, basically help these people uh, to understand better, especially on speech uh, cues, is if you're talking with somebody with a hearing aid, right. if that person is behind you or to the sides, if you know their name, call them by right. their name so that you get their attention. attention. Right. When they turn to you and they look at you, mm -hmm. then when you're speaking to them, speak slowly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might need to re re uh, rephrase when they're talking. For example, uh, I need to go to, uh, I need to go to school. You, they probably don't posing. understand school. Right. They probably need to re rephrase that word again so that they can understand. Mm -hmm. So okay. you make them understand your conversation so that they don't get fatigued when you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that uh, we are trying to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what would be now the consequences of? Uh, or the challenges that these people have had, yes. like I'm staying with someone at home, yes. I have not realized they have hearing problems. Yes. But uh, it is causing me emotional breakdown. I'm trying to tell them something, yes. and I it's like they've not heard me yes. or they ignored. Yes. Uh, how now do I predict this person has a problem? Usually, you know, even at home, we assume every other time you see a child, he's either the volume is too high, they go close to the television, so that they can be able and they're just so close to the television. You know, those are telltale signs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you talk to somebody, if they are facing the other direction, mm -hmm. they will not look at you or they will not respond to you. Those are some of the signs you can be able to see somebody is not able to hear. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you are forced to speak even loudly so that they can be able to hear. And you know, in, with, with our Kenyan system or way of doing things, is that who you are Spanyagi Nini? Who you are Skiagi? And it is true, probably, it doesn't <laughs> it be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And that problem is what we, we, are, we are highlighting that this time. Mm -hmm. Especially now that you have a mask even at home, mm -hmm. or when you're speaking to somebody and they keep on saying, ah, ah, mm -hmm. they're coming closer, they want to, you know, they're looking they directly are to in your face. They're trying to leave. They're trying to struggle to understand you in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. So, and that is why we are telling you, if you have a mask and you're speaking to this person, at least increase your voice, but don't shout. Mm -hmm. Because if you shout, you distort speech and they will not actually be able to understand you again. So it's just important to talk loudly, but don't shout. Okay, it's still on the same thing of uh, 
increasing your volume uh, we have people who have problems of uh, shouting they, they speak on low tones yes. and when they do that they could break their voices yes. how then do i adapt to this new yeah. norm so usually with hearing loss there are two ends when you can't be able to hear your, yourself well because of hearing loss, you tend to shout. So there are people who naturally shout because they can't be able to hear themselves. They want to be audible, they want to hear themselves, and they think that you can't be able to hear. They so they shout. Yes, so they shout. <laughs> so the other thing is that uh, with our vocal cords, our vocal cords, they usually adapt. For example, you'll see pastors or people who are working in uh, like uh, the, uh, the, the touts and so on. Their voice, they are usually very huge. They can be able to shout or talk loudly without a, a microphone. Because of the stretch for a long duration of time, they tend to adapt to that kind of environment. Sometimes it's, uh, they, they get problems like uh, nodules on their vocal cords, mm -hmm. especially pastors or even teachers when they're teaching small kids. Mm -hmm. uh, those are unintended consequences. And uh, usually these are people who need to speak to see a speech specialist, mm -hmm. especially the people we call them uh, professional, you know, professional, because your voice is professional and it is gold, your voice is gold. Mm -hmm. People who are like teachers, uh, you know, pastors mm -hmm. or singers, their voice is gold. And if your voice is becoming hoarse, then you need to see either an ENT specialist or a speech ther therapist to teach you how to use abdominal muscles mm -hmm. or air from the abdomen so that you can be able to speak uh, properly. Right. Yes. If you could mention about these consequences of uh, negative hearing. So we have some unintended negative uh, consequences of uh, hearing loss. Mm -hmm. People who have hearing loss, remember, hearing is the airway to is the airway to highway to the heart. Okay. So in other words, whatever goes to the ears goes to the heart. Now, people who are not able to hear properly, they for they go through five stages of uh, or consequences of hearing loss. Right. One of them is probably they, they, they would deny that they have a hearing loss. Uh, and the other thing is it affects one of them is the poor quality of life. Mm -hmm. And this is as a result of isolation or withdrawing from their community or the people they interact with every other day. So because of you don't want to repeat, you don't want to ask somebody to re keep on repeating the words they are saying. Because people don't understand you uh, with the problem that you're having. It's a hidden disability. Mm -hmm. It has stigma in itself. So people tend to withdraw. People say, tend not to in, uh, interact uh, with others. They isolate themselves uh, and then they become depressed. Sometimes they have a lot of anxiety even when they are going for meetings. If somebody is going for, a, for example, an interview and has a hearing problem, basically they have anxiety to attend to such uh, interviews. So these are in, unintended. So people, they withdraw and they stay in isolated areas and they usually don't like interacting with communities. These are unintended consequences of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a solution to this. Mm -hmm. first, of them, first of all is you have to have a hearing test done. Of course, from a hearing test, when it is done, you can either be fitted with a hearing aid or mis it could be even something that can be corrected with medicine or even procedures like cleaning the ears. Mm -hmm. As simple as that, because blocked wax can cause hearing loss. Mm -hmm. It could be, for, especially for children like a foreign body or a bead, like a bead or a bean inside the ear that is blocking the ear or transmission of sound to the ear. Actually, now that you have mentioned about uh, the works in the ear, mm. how often should one check the uh, ears and the, the hygiene, okay. the, the, the ear hygiene? Okay. How often should it be? So basically the ear has a normal cleaning mechanism, like a conveyor belt. It removes dirt from outside, mm -hmm. I mean from inside to outside, like a conveyor belt. It does that every other time. Okay, so if you have dirt or wax in the ear, I think it will just come and fall down here and in an area we call the concha. It's like a ball. Mm -hmm. That will come from outside and then it will fall outside there. And the basic hygiene is just to clean outside the ear. But people have this tendency of using a cotton band mm -hmm. and cleaning inside. So what you basically you do is that you take a cotton bud 
The ear has done its cleaning, it has done the conveyor, conveyor belt system of cleaning, and then you push back the wax. Mm -hmm. So every time you do that, you cause impaction of wax in the ear. Right. So I think one of them is we discourage people from putting things or cleaning the, the ear with things like cotton bud or anything like that on yourself. At times it gets so itchy. Yeah. Uh, is it normal? Is it, is it, is it something uh, to do with health when I feel itchy and then I insert something? So usually when you, sometimes when the ear is dry, or there's a particle that goes inside there, mm -hmm. you, you always feel like you want to itch. Mm -hmm. So the extension, uh, by extension, people will probably look for a cock somewhere or a chicken and pluck the feathers and do something nice yeah, on that ear. Good, you know, yeah. it feels so nice. <laughs> yeah. And you go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just take a piece of, a, you know, the back of your pen and you do that. Or a matchbox. Too. Or a matchbox and you do that. The consequences is we have seen that. Mm -hmm. Either that piece will be break inside there or it will you know fall inside there mm -hmm. or you'll scratch that area and get an infection or you'll even push uh, wax inside there so basically i think is if you can be able to avoid that the better if you can't i think you need to be very gentle or probably somebody else to help you on that all right mm -hmm. we are running out of time okay how now do we uh we have seen how things are now falling, how to communicate. Yes. What would be your uh, parting shot in regards to the just background noise and clearing of masks? So the advice is for people who have hearing loss, mm -hmm. if you have a hearing loss, I think the first thing, if you go in a place, you have to analyze your environment. Like we are saying, look at the distance. The person who is ahead of you, is, he, is the person 1.5 or 2 meters ahead of you? And what is the environment? Is it a noisy background? Mm -hmm. If you are at home, basically if there are a lot of things running, like the television is running, the TV is running, kids are playing and so on, that is a lot of background noise. Mm -hmm. You can't be able to communicate when there's a lot of background noise. So I think you need to reduce the background noise. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing. The other thing is the, the clear mask. The mask you can be able to, if you can be able to ac get access to that, uh, you, you basically so that people can be able to lip read or you can be able to lip read people at home right. or at work. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we're encouraging even in public places, even in places like this, uh, uh, TV station is the use of uh, sign language interpreters mm -hmm. so that people who are deaf or hard of hearing can be able to read the sign language on the other end and be able to understand uh, uh, better. Mm -hmm. uh, we are encouraging even when people are going, uh, having public address, please have an interpreter so that these people can be able to understand. Mm -hmm. And for people who are deaf or uh, cannot be able to lip read, you can use some applications mm -hmm. like Live Transcribe. When you use that application, the application will basically uh, live transcribe what the other person is talking about or a hearing aid that can do that for you. Uh, the other thing is we are encouraging people to do a hearing test. Right now people are not going to hospital uh, for various reasons and I don't want to go into that. But you can download an application at home and check your hearing and if there's uh, you know those if there's a hearing loss of course you you need to consult with an audiologist or a hearing uh, specialist mm -hmm. or even an ENT specialist so that they can tell you the way forward actually be, be, before you move forward on that mm -hmm. the app after I have downloaded maybe you could uh, take us through the, the how, how, how to do it and then how to define this is a problem or the, okay. it is auto generic okay yeah. so like the WHO application we it's called the hear who W H O and then hear mm -hmm. the hear who so that application you just download it you put some earphones and then you, it will give you self instructions on what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and then once you complete the like the five minutes test on the left ear and the right ear or both sides mm -hmm. it will tell you whether your hearing is normal or you have a mild hearing loss or moderate hearing loss or your hearing loss is completely gone and then it will even give you a guideline of what you're supposed to do okay yes all right thank you so much for coming and uh
helping us to understand and teaching us on how to adapt this uh, particular period of time, uh, which is difficult having masks to have to speak and having a muffled speech, it's difficult. Yes. I have seen people struggle to yes. speak and uh, we just lower our mask and speak and then we are like, uh, is there any yeah. officer around to yeah. arrest me? That's true. <laughs> it has been difficult and thank you so much for coming and uh, putting things into perspective. Thank he has you. been my guest, Dr. Isaac Wahome. He is an ENT specialist and uh, I'm hoping you have learned uh, something. I'm done for the day. It's Madaraka Day. Uh, celebrations are ongoing in other areas and other places. We, we are waiting for the president's uh, speech on what he will say this particular date in regards where we are um, as the COVID-19 pandemic, what is on your screen now is uh, how things are at State House. Uh, that's where the president will be speaking from. Uh, Cabinet secretaries, deputy president, uh, diplomats and dignitaries will be there. Uh, of course, the president is expected to address the nation. Uh, other uh, events that happen, like the performances will be at Nyayo Stadium. So those have been put in place as well, just to entertain you like the norm. The only difference is you'll be seeing that from your home and uh, there's no gathering. We will celebrate Madaraka Day, whether there is the pandemic or not. So keep, it, keep yourself safe, wash your hands, stay at home if you have, just come out in, here when it's necessary for you to be out here, observe the directives that have been given by the World Health Organization and the Ministry of Health. Social distancing, wearing your mask, appropriate by the way, uh, and then uh, sanitizing. Those are the guidelines. I am done here. I'll be seeing you again next week, same time, same place. Until then, have yourself a very good Monday, prosperous week ahead, and happy Madaraka Day. I'm Dereva Hilary. Good morning.